Well, here we are at the end of the college basketball season. I, for one, for one, for starters, I am glad that we made it all the way to the end of the season this time. Um, because, you know, usually, you know, these videos for college basketball don't do very well. They don't do very well because most people don't watch the regular season. And only watched, you know, a couple weeks of the uh, the conference tournaments. You know, those two weeks of the conference tournaments. And then, you know, of course, March Madness itself. But what a wild and crazy March Madness we had this year for 2021. And, you know, one of these two teams were going to win their first national championship. And it just had to be Baylor this year. What a dominant performance. No, no Let's not discredit Gonzaga here. Let... let this was a complete dominant performance by the Baylor Bears. We're talking smothering defense, efficient at the three-point line. And you know that is a recipe for success out here. Forcing many turnovers in this game. We're talking many turnovers in the national championship. Was Gonzaga tired? I'm not gonna give not gonna give that as a reasoning. Is the West Coast Conference too weak? Well, we know that's a lie now because for years now it's been, you know, mostly the West Coast Conference has been doing much better than something like, let's say, the Mountain West. So, the Mountain West has too many problems right now as of itself. You know, like, we're talking San Diego State, UNLV, Boise State. They've all been trying to leave the Mountain West Conference because of decisions that have been made. So, to say, you know, things like, oh, well, Gonzaga needs to go to a new conference. Gonzaga needs to go to the Pac-12, to the Mountain West. That's, that's the stupidest thing I've ever heard in my entire life. I had to say, you know, remember, Gonzaga said... You know, hey, we're going to try and schedule as hard as we can in the non-conference. And we got our conference to, you know, back down and, you know, take away two bottom-tier games against our own conference. So we only have to play 16 games in the conference slate instead of the full 18. Remember that? Yeah. Yeah, I remember that leverage. But Baylor was dominant this entire season, aside from a loss against Oklahoma State and Kansas. We're talking, they beat up on Houston, a really good Houston team, and they beat up on Gonzaga. Damn good Gonzaga team. One of the best Gonzaga teams I've ever seen in my entire life. You know, these were the two teams, you know, that we were anticipating this entire season. We were supposed to have this game in December. We got it now, in April. And although it kind of disappointed in regards, you know, the fact that it was going to be a heavyweight bout and it just looked like Mike Tyson versus Buster Douglas out there, you know, we still got the game we wanted. So, to break it down for conferences this year, because a lot of people are, are casual basketball fans and do not seem to get you know, college basketball until very late into the season. So let's break it all down, shall we? Let's break it all down. Start the Big 12 first. That's where our champion, our national champion has come from this year. Again, Baylor, absolutely dominant performance by the Baylor Bears this entire season. You know, aside from a couple losses and a three-week COVID pause. Uh, Kansas was down this year. Kansas State, remember, they lost to a D2 school. They lost to a Division II school. Absolutely disgusting. Iowa State didn't even win a game in conference this year, I don't think. Texas was way too inconsistent. That's why, that's why Shaka Smart is gone. We could have fired him, but he left on his own accord, and we got Chris Beard instead. So don't 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 say you know oh well yeah da, 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 and all that all that nonsense oh well, we were gonna fire Shaga why why were we? he he was gonna be gone either way we were either gonna fire him or you know this would happen um actually where did Shaka go I forgot I forgot what school he went to but that's that's that, I don't even care anymore because we have Chris Beard um, 
Oklahoma had a great stretch during this season, you know, winning you know a lot of ranked games in a row. Uh, Oklahoma State, of course, they had Kate Cunningham for most of the season, you know, except for that one game against Baylor. You know, there, there's that. West Virginia was still good. Texas Tech was still good. You know, both very solid teams. This entire season. So what about the ACC? Been very much a down year for the conference. Duke didn't even make the tournament. North Carolina, you know, they struggled the entire year. Virginia struggled the entire year. You know, I mean, it, it, it was a weird time. You know, there were teams like Louisville that I was high on or for like about five seconds until, you know, things started to happen to them. And of course, there were teams like Clemson and Florida State that were, you know, they were they were good, but they just didn't have what it takes, I don't think. So, you know, I mean, the ACC definitely a down year for the conference. I think it'll be better, you know, maybe next year, hopefully. Big Ten, obviously, the conference, you know, that completely blew it in this tournament. They did it again. Nine teams got selected for the tournament. It, it was top, it was from top to bottom one of the best conferences this year. I mean, this was one of the two conferences we talked about pretty much the entire season. And the fact that the conference completely laid an egg in the tournament is just no test. There's just no there's just no way yeah. that that we can you know just talk about it and just be like, oh well. Yeah, the Big Ten did good this year, but did you see them in the tournament? Did you see them in the tournament? Not a good, not a good show. Like another year with no Big Ten teams winning a national championship. Gotta be, gotta be something wrong there. SEC, a huge surprise this year in the forms of Alabama and Arkansas. Now, usually the SEC is not really that strong. In fact, you know, I feel like the SEC is way too overrated in basketball. They're not really that good of a conference. But this year, Alabama and Arkansas really carried this conference because Kentucky, remember, they were down, down bad this year. Down bad. We're talking real bad. And the fact that, you know, Alabama was lighting things up and Arkansas was coming in from out of nowhere in February. I mean, things were just looking good. Things were looking pretty nice. So what about the Big East? Um, not too much to say, actually. You know, I, I really, I did not expect Georgetown to come out of nowhere and win the Big East tournament. Did not expect that at all. Uh, but Villanova and Creighton, they were the cream of the crop. You know, Villanova's pretty much been dominating this conference for years now, ever since it got formed back in 2013. You know, but Creighton, Creighton, they were right there for it for most of it. You know, I think we could have talked about it a little bit. That of course there were a couple of surprises, surprise games at least involving those two teams, especially you know Georgetown getting hot at the right time. But honestly, there really wasn't much to talk about with the Big East this year, not too much at all. Pac-12, they got hot in March. The fact that they got hot in March says a lot because they got whooped. A lot in the regular season, not just by their own conference, not just by the, not just by them beating each other, but by the other teams, you know, in the non-conference. Like San Diego State, remember they had they put up a beating on UCLA one time, you know, and there was a big game with Ohio State for UCLA as well, which I think they lost if I remember that correctly, you know. And there were plenty of other bad losses by this conference, you know, to West Coast Conference teams that aren't named Gonzaga, you know. And it was just hard to watch, you know. Again, I I, I made a complaint about it during the Maui Invitational of how insufferable it was to watch Bill Walton. So I don't know how Hatch Well fans do it every year, you know. I mean, don't get me wrong, there's some great antics in there, but as far as, you know, analyzing basketball goes, I don't think I don't think Bill Walton has all that. You know. So and the fact of the matter is that the Pac twelve just didn't look very strong until the tournament. I mean 
who would have guessed that Oregon State would come out of nowhere win a Pac-12 tournament like that? Not me. You know, there was a couple games in the Pac-12 watch this year. <sighs> Especially that Stanford-UCLA game um, back in, what, January, I believe? It was January or February when I watched that game, and it was one hell of a game, one fun game. So, I mean, I'm real glad about that. Let's talk about some other conferences real quick. These conferences that are, you know, on these are high major conferences, honestly. You know, teams that usually get, you know, maybe two or more bids into the tournament. The American, pretty much dominated by Houston this entire year. If it weren't for, you know, some weird, you know, COVID, you know, being all quirky and stuff like that, I don't think Wichita State would have gotten into this tournament. I don't think they would have. You know, uh, but I mean, it just is what it is. Mountain West, uh, I, I alluded, I said something about it earlier. Mountain West was down this year. And the fact that they did move the 20 conference games, you know, I saw this as a W. I saw this as a good thing because you don't need Division Two opponents, NAIA opponents, Division Three opponents. You don't need those types of games on your schedule anymore. You don't need those. You need Division One opponents. You need those. And the fact that you know the Mountain West went to 20 this year and will be going to 20 for years to come now says a lot. But it angers teams like San Diego State and UNLV, who are basketball you know icons in this conference, and you know teams like Nevada that have been you know good for a while now, or Utah State who went to the tournament this year, you know just a little bit weird you know the conference has been down you know significantly for a couple of years now but they got two teams to the tournament I really thought they were only going to get one because Colorado State was also on the bubble for pretty much the entire season Boise State was also on the bubble for pretty much the entire season I did not think they were going to get four teams to the tournament there was just no way that was going to happen Atlantic 10 can't really say much about the 8 n because not a lot happened in my opinion, can't. I mean, there's. I mean, it's the same old, same old. They got two teams in the tournament at least. I mean, it, it, I just don't watch enough Atlantic Ted basketball to say anything real good about it. Um, West Coast Conference, of course, got two teams in this year. A lot stronger than it has been. You know, it's been a lot stronger. You know, BYU got. You know, they played Gonzaga real close in the. WCC championship game and had just had a real good season. And other teams, you know, had some real huge victories. Remember, San Francisco got a big victory against Virginia. So, you know, there were big time games that the conference showed up in. I think it's just the fact that there's a couple of bottom dwellers there that, you know, keep the conference a little bit too low, in my opinion. But, you know, it's still higher than the Mountain West because there's no way that. I wouldn't want a team like San Jose State in the West Coast Conference. I wouldn't want a team like Air Force in the West Coast Conference. You know, just generally not good teams there. So there's that. You know, wishy-washy there. Uh, who else? Who else? Who else? Um, i trying to think here. Oh, yeah, the Missouri Valley. I think they I think they got, you know, a couple teams in the tournament as well. You know, Drake at um, Loyola, Chicago, you know. Both damn good teams, you know. Missouri Valley had some real good stretches, you know, especially when Drake was undefeated and Loyola was also doing very good. Both those teams are very good, so I'm glad the Missouri Valley you know, has gotten two bids this year. Good for that conference. And for the other one bid conferences, you know, it's it got real interesting this year, you know, for teams like Belmont, for teams like Winthrop, for teams like my University of North Texas Mean Green, who won a tournament game for the first time. You know, Abilene Christian as well. They won a tournament game against my Texas Longhorns. You know, lots of interesting stuff there. But aside from all that, you know, what a damn good year it was. We made it. Somehow we made it all the way to April the 5th where we got what we got. It didn't, again, it didn't end the way we wanted it to, but we got our Dream National Championship. So, until next season, everybody, I'll see you.
around.